Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our backend IP testing webinar at Wisen Academy. And thank you for very much for being here uh, today and for taking the time to participate and to learn a little bit more. My name is Laura Perales. I'm the Academy Program Coordinator. And for those who haven't heard about WiseLine or Wisen Academy before, let me do a very quick uh, introduction. WiseLine is a software development and design services company with operations in the United States, Mexico, Vietnam, uh, Thailand, Australia, Spain, with six years of experience and more than 600 employees worldwide. We started as a product company and gradually migrated to the services once we realized that we could help um, other high growth companies to build better products faster through our different disciplines, such as technical writing, UX, um, project management, and all engineering disciplines, SRE, QA, artificial intelligence, mobile, etc. Um, Wiseline is the trusted ally for brands such as National Geographic, Shape Security, and the Washington Post. As part of our learning and development culture, Wiseline motivates all its employees to learn by teaching, which means um, sharing with the internal and external community the knowledge and experience that we generate day by day, um, contributing to everyone's growth, everyone's professional's growth, and we do this through Wisen Academy and its free educational programs such as um, workshops, talks, certifications about today's most high value skills in tech. And in each discipline we have, such as this webinar prepared by our great team of experts. Thanks guys in advance for the uh, dedication and for sharing your knowledge, of course. Um, please follow us on academy.wisen.com or on social media, um, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn as Wisen Academy, and take advantage of everything that we prepare for you. And last but not least, enjoy the course, try to be focused, and ask as much as you want about the topic, and do some uh, networking. This space was created for you, okay? So thanks again, and Carlos, uh, Guillermo, the mic is all yours. Okay, uh, thank you, Laura, and welcome everybody to this webinar. Uh, well, as Laura mentioned before, uh, this um, uh, webinar is is uh, it's, uh, presented by Westland Academy, and this is oriented for uh, to beginners. And this is for uh, uh, people who wants to start in, in this uh, world uh, about a, a backend testing. Okay, so um, I think that uh, most of us uh, or, or um, most of the people uh, are using um, in, in daily uh, only front end. Um, uh, test cases and we need to know the, the big impact that uh, the knowledge uh, that we can uh, implement into our projects uh, related to uh, uh, backend testing uh, uh, can uh, bring into the project okay so we are going to uh, learn um, some concepts ba basic concepts and we are going to perform a, a uh, demo uh, to you to to understand and practice all that we are going to learn during this this webinar okay so uh, well um, as Laura mentioned before uh, Carlos and, and I are going to to talk about all these topics uh, let me introduce myself uh, my name is uh, Guillermo Morales and I I before Wiseline, I, I worked at IBM during uh, three years, and I start to to work at Wiseline uh, since October uh, the past year. So I have six months in the company, but uh, I have experience 
uh, in too many areas of the uh, talking about the quality assurance area, obviously. Uh, for example, I have experience in front end, back end, uh, CI tools, uh, also in, in creating a test strategies, test plan, etc. And uh, also, uh, I am a, um, an STQB certified tester, so I think that I have a experience to 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 answer most of your question or doubts that you can have uh, about all these topics. And um, well, uh, Carlos, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, absolutely. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you everyone for attending, and it's. It's really nice to have you all around here, you know, having the current limitations. Uh, about myself, what can, what can I say? Uh, my name is Carlos Veloz. I have overall six years of experience in the IT industry. I got to say that I joined Wiseline over six months ago, practically the same and the same month that uh, Guillermo joined. Uh, and also I was working on IBM at that time. I was working there over three years, working as a test automation specialist focusing on projects related with the backend and front-end technologies and lately <clears throat> sorry lately started working with api testing so it's really nice to have this conversation with all of you and to share a little about about our experience and moving to to the interesting world of api testing okay there are a few well laura uh, do you want us to go there or or should someone else explain the important notes about this meeting? Go ahead, Guillermo, or Carlos. Okay, absolutely, there is no problem. Okay, there are a few important notes that we wanna mention before we have we get started with this conversation. Please, uh, first of all, use your first and last name for registration, so it will be easier for all of us to, to understand who's asking any question or to get to you easily. Mute your microphone during during all these sessions, so that way we can avoid a lot of noise. Use the chat for question during the QA section, because we will be alternating and we will be at all times uh, checking the chat in case you have any question or, or comments. Focus your questions on the presented topic, please. Uh, this will keep the the conversation ongoing. Turn off your camera in case of connection connection issues. You know, it it happens and um, recording is in allowed. Guillermo. Okay, sure. Uh, well, uh, talking about the Academy Code of Conduct, uh, uh, we have uh, these three uh, points that we need to consider, please. Uh, so first of all, be respectful. Uh, there are no bad questions or ideas. Uh, uh, this means that uh, all, questions, all questions are uh, welcome. So please uh, feel free to ask everything. It doesn't matter uh, the level of your question because as I said uh, before, this is uh, oriented for beginners. Um, also be welcoming and patient. Uh, we need to remember that we, we have a, a lot of people in the, in the call and uh, all of us uh, has the same goal, okay? So learn. A, a new technology, a new tool. So this is for, for everybody and uh, we need to, to be careful about this. And the last one, uh, be, care be careful in the words that you choose. So it's uh, part of the, the first point. Uh, so we need to be respectful for uh, in every case, okay? Okay, um, well, uh, our goal, as I mentioned, uh, what we expect uh, you learn uh, about after this uh, webinar, okay? Well, students will understand how to execute API tests, and also uh, all of you will learn about tools special, uh, specialized uh, for backend testing like Postman. We are going to talk a little bit about uh, too many uh, tools uh, that you can use, um, but uh, this webinar is focused on, on this uh, tool, Postman, okay? This is the agenda that we, we are uh, going to cover during this webinar. So as you can see, we divide this, in, we split this in, in four sections. Uh, first of all, a, a little bit about theory. Um, back in this introduction, because uh, as I mentioned, um, most of the people 
are, are um, comfortable only using a test a, uh, over the, the UI and we we never care about the, the backend side okay so first of all we need to to learn some concepts in the basics to start with the next section which is a, a tool that specializes to execute this kind of test and and after that um, we are going to talk about Newman Newman um, it's going to be covered by Carlos Veloz but a uh, uh, a little spoiler is that uh, uh, we are going to see in theory how to implement it, but we're going to be focused on Postman. Newman is going to be like a, a bonus, okay? In the last one, we, we are going to perform a, a, a demo for you, okay? So first of all, the, the, the first section, uh, backend test introduction. So Carlos, you want to start? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Guillermo. Okay, backend testing and web services. As you already know, there are different web services that uh, most of the time we have to deal with. We have the SOAP services and the REST services. So it's uh, we have to be very careful about what tools we use to for for API testing. And um, give me just one second. Okay, so take, basically what is API? API is the, is the system that is in between the different devices that allows them to communicate from one device that we can call it client to another one that we can call it a server or a data source information. So for these purposes, the, the only method that we have for these two different systems to communicate is through is through APIs. Most of the times what we have here is a client makes a request to that external entity and that entity responses with the information that we're gonna, that, that we are consulting for that topic. Just give me just one second to put on the slide because I'm not sure what it's moving to this one. Okay, and that basically concludes the topic for web services. And let's proceed with the client server communication. Okay. Um, well, uh, this is uh, the first, uh, um, the first uh, uh, concept, uh, web services. Um, we, we are going to, to cover one by one. So if you have questions, you don't need to wait until the end of the webinar. For example, uh, there are uh, short uh, concepts that we are going to provide to you. And if you didn't understand something or you want to ask something, uh, uh, when you see this slide, uh, which is the agenda, uh, please uh, provide your, your answer. And we can uh, make a, a little pause to answer uh, all the doubts that you can have. Okay, so let me continue with the client server model. Okay, this, uh, this is an architecture that is implemented uh, always in, in the development life cycle. Okay, uh, what it means, um, we need to, uh, when we develop a, a, an application, we need a, cl a client, could be uh, more than two, uh, in a server, okay? It, it, it's uh, like the, the name says, um, we need to, to, this consists in two parts. The server is the, the object that, I, that is going to be always listening. So when the client uh, execute an action or ask for some information to the server, the server is going to reply that that call and is going to uh, make a response to the client. This is a way that that we are going to to interact uh, in our applications. When we okay, uh, when we uh, start to develop a new application, uh, most of the cases we simulate 
a server in our uh, locally in our computer okay but in, in when our application is delivered into a production environment in the real life uh, the server is in some uh, place uh, in the world uh, in we don't care about the which uh, where it's located. We only need to care about the, the server is going to to provide to us a response after we uh, after we make a call. Okay, but locally uh, during the process of develop an application is going to be simul simulate a server uh, or computer. Okay. We are we are trying to to keep these uh, concepts uh, the most simple as possible because uh, we don't want to um, confuse you. Uh, we we want to make this clear uh, as possible, and we want to cover a, a lot of topics during this webinar. So it's because I said if you have a, a question or you're going, uh, you want to go deep, uh, more deep into into a topic, please let us know in, in the in the chat. Okay. 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 Absolutely. Well, let's continue with the next topic, which is HTTP. Just give me one second because for some reason it seems that we're having problems with the communication. Okay, finally it's here. For HTTP, what we have here is, as you already know, when we are trying to consult a resource from the internet, we need to make sure that this connection is secure. So we have this interaction between the client and server and they before they can get to know each other, they had a they had a set a, a handshake a way to communicate to frequently do their requests and do re, the responses and for http as well, as you many of you already know we are migrating to the https which is basically implementing a secure secure server layer oh, just give me one second okay finally it's here yep so http stands for hyper Hypertext Transfer Protocol is mostly the protocol that we use when we want to check a website. It's the, only it's the only way we have to interact and get all the information that we need, basically going through hypertext links. And for HTTPS, it's practically the same. We are only adding this uh, secure socket layer to the HTTP protocol, so we can ensure that the connection is, is not only secure, but it's also encrypted. So it's better for us that we can, no one is going to steal easily or information because we are protected for this extra layer. It's commonly used for the banking industry, shopping industry. You can see it in many of your banks or when you are opening a, a new website, you can check there is a small logo just like this one, the one in green. And also something that I want to add, uh, you can see this, this um, concept about the protocols, like a, a kind of agreement between uh, both sides. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, the, the, this protocol is, use, is used to establish a communication between both parts, a client and a server. So it's, uh, you can see the protocol as, a, an, a, as an agreement between both parts, uh, for example, if in this moment I I tell you that when I raise my hand, all the people here in the call is going to to start talking, and when I um, put down my hand, uh, all the people is is going to to uh, quiet. The, that's an agreement between both sides. Okay, so that that's uh, in simple words uh, uh, a, a protocol. The, the definition of, of protocol, okay? So now, risk, request and responses. Uh, this is similar 
uh, about the architecture, uh, architecture that I mentioned before between, uh, uh, well, about the server client model. Mm -hmm. And the, the, this is a, this involves a, these concepts that we mentioned before about the HTTP protocols because it's the way they, how we communicate between the server and, and all the clients. And basically, as I mentioned, the client make a, re a request and the server is going to provide a response this is the way that uh, this is going uh, uh, to work, okay? So uh, uh, in the browser, uh, the request is going to be uh, made by these kind of pro protocols, HTTP and HTTPS. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is more visually how the re request and response uh, looks. Uh, we are going to talk more about the the syntax, uh, the, syn the syntax of this uh, structure uh, in a couple of slides uh, more. Uh, but basically, as you can see in my uh, left side, um, the request is going to use a method. Uh, this method, in this example, is post. The post method is that we are going to use to to make the request and we uh, well we're going to talk more about the different kind of methods uh, on this later but in, in this example it, in the first word post is the method that we are going to use the next part is uh, the endpoint uh, okay so the, when i hit this endpoint with the next parameters, which uh, are the header and not also the message body, we're going to receive a response, okay? In, in my header, you, we can see that we have a, an, an authorization and the content type of, uh, of the response that I want to receive. In this case, I, I'm expecting to receive a, an application JSON for the request that I'm doing uh, in the message that I'm sending to, to the server, it's the, uh, the creation of the new project. Okay, so uh, let's keep it simple. Uh, here is uh, my request. Uh, I want to hit this endpoint and this is my message, create a new project. Okay, so the server is going to provide the response in this okay in this uh, point of the the process. Uh, we are going to receive an status code. In this case, is the two hundred status code, which means that uh, the request was executed successfully. There are different kind of status code that is important that you you can. Uh, that, that you know to, to work on this, okay? For example, if you see that a, um, an error is happening and you are receiving a 500 uh, status code, it means that uh, we have a, an internal server problem, okay? So, or for example, the most common uh, case, the 404, uh, which means that uh, the element is not found for example, or I don't know, in the 401 also, okay, which is uh, uh, forbidden, uh, that is a kind of a unauthorized uh, error. And uh, as we continue with the next parameters about the response, we can see that, uh, as I mentioned in my request, we are receiving an application JSON uh, structure, okay? And in my structure, uh, we can see that the, the message body uh, where, yes, where I, I can notice that my request was uh, created successfully. And now I have a new element uh, created uh, with its ID, uh, the name, uh, and other also attributes like the order, uh, indent, comment count. And uh, only uh, I had to send the name, the, the name, sorry. 
we are going to to do a, a demo about this so um, no worries if you don't understand the, the, this process we are going to see it uh, uh, in uh, the next uh, slides and i talk about the different kind of methods okay um, all of us or uh, most of the people uh, who study uh, uh, any major um, related to the uh, systems engineering or uh, information technology, uh, we work with crudes, okay? What crudes mean? Uh, well, it's uh, the acronym uh, of create, read, update, and delete, okay? We, we can uh, reduce uh, this only saying that the only method uh, that you need to associate with a get method is the, the read because get is uh, as the description mentioned it is when you need to retrieve a, a existing data existing resources okay it's like uh, when you work with sql or mysql uh, any kind of a database language okay and you you make a query just to retrieve existing data okay that's a, a, a get method it's only read the existing data all of them of all, all of the methods uh, which involves any kind of a uh, updates in into a database it's going to be like a post a put or a delete a post you are always going to use a post to create new elements new components or new resources into the database a put it's always when you want to update your existing data and delete well as the name says is when you want to remove the existing the existing data okay so in this case uh, returning to the previous slide uh, if you want to to uh, to to after create this this new item if you want to make a rollback for example uh, you are going to use the delete method instead of the post method which is uh, defined here you are going to specify a delete method or in case that you want to update data you need to specify that is going to use a put method or as i mentioned if you only want to make a query you only have to use a get method in the parameters body depend of the depending of the method that you are going to to use okay so why in, in until this point we need to ask ourselves uh, why I, I i need to to implement backend tests because okay i i we have an ui an interface a user interface and i can use uh, execute my test uh, from the user perspective right so why i need this kind of test okay here uh, um, here i want to 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 mention some advantages about this uh, for example if you want if you if you are in a nearly phase of the development life cycle and there's no uh, user interface implemented yet uh, only the the apis you can start to test uh, all the all the endpoints uh, from that API, and, and you can start to 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 receive early feedback. Okay. Another advantage about this, probably, if you are uh, testing a model in in an application, and you receive an error before to to report the bug or uh, raise the hand and mention that the, the application is failing you can first test the api uh, because 
if the API is working, it means that the problem is going to be uh, presented in the UI. So probably a, a kind of a validation in the front end side, and that's very helpful for that uh, developer because uh, he or she reduced the effort to to figure out how, uh, where is the error. Okay, because the error can be presented in in one of the both sides. So if you can provide all the information that you can, always is going to be very helpful because you reduce time and effort to fix that problem, that bug. This is this is the another reason that why need to implement this kind of test okay also as a quality assurance as a qa we need to be careful about every every section of the application back end front end okay so you need to start to implement this kind of test to start a ensuring the, the the quality of the code and that will be all from this uh, subtopic, request, request and responses. And now the next topic is API testing. Yes, absolutely. You know, actually what uh, Guillermo said is really important because for a software QA engineer, it is not only about executing the test cases and get the result log and that's it. You want to get involved as soon as there is something ready to be tested. It can be at an early stage as a design phase or analysis phase. So for us, it's really important to test as soon as there is an API available so we can check further responses or more comprehensive tests that we can. We need to wait until there is an UI done so we can get use of another set of tools. Okay, here for this section, I would like to hear from you, sort of, through the chat. What are the different tools that you have used for API testing? Because as I said earlier, there are different web services, you know, there are the subservices, and of course there were services that are merely the, the topic about this, this session. So if you can write down in the chat section, what are the, the tools that you are more commonly used for API testing or you can also say that I never used it. Okay, here we have some, some comments. Okay. Some say not at the moment, others say that Postman, Sub UI, or Ready API. Or another advantageous client. Oh, that's very impressive. Okay. We gotta say that, you know, there are different perks and advantages of using each different tool. But mostly what, what we want to focus on is on this. As you can see here, we have a simple test or a simple description actually, that is about getting an endpoint and checking the, the status code, that's it. But there are two different ways to do it according to the tool that we are using. For instance, we have super tests and Frisbee, but as both of us are JavaScript solution. As you can see, the code is practically the same. The only adjustments that you have to do are based on the code guidelines for each specific tool. And moving to the next one, to the next one that I'm seeing some of you, what would be the major difference? Okay, uh, for this specific question, either uh, I will add you to be more more specific. What would be the major difference for each tool, or, or what exactly are you referring to? Uh, but let's proceed while uh, Guillermo is taking care of that. Here we have another example using Rest Assure. With for me, it's kind of more readable for both of us, for the developers and the QA engineers because we have, again, checking a, checking a resource, consulting for a specific ID, and evaluating just that the status code is actually the one that we are aiming. Moving to Postman, because that's the tool that we are gonna discuss and we are gonna do a, a demo later on. It's also a JavaScript solution. It comes with, it, with its own code, but as you can see, 
there is no real a big difference about adapting from one tool to another. And I would say that there is no, there is no uh, overall ultimate super, super tool that you can use for API testing and that's it. As always, you have to consider the infrastructure, the technologies, and the, the mindset that you have in your team. So probably you can always, as we always said, you can set a minor goals that you want to achieve. You, you can also learn about a new tool and present about the, the perks and advantages of using that specific tool versus what, what there is in your current state. For us, for, for us, Postman is actually a really user-friendly tool, not only for developers, for QA. If you know about JavaScript, you can create your own scripts and it's easy to check not only the status codes, but also the JSON schema that we will abort in, in a later slide. And, and finally, I would say that this is actually the big difference from this tool to another, but, but I'm not necessarily this, that's the only perk. Postman can be implemented with Newman to a continuous integration model. So for us, it's really helpful because that can be implemented into a CI CD environment. Oh, yeah, no, no worries. I'm going through your question, Nether. API stands for Application Programming Interface. So we can say it this way. We have two systems, and they they are they were built in different technologies, so it's not going to be easy for them to communicate. So we have to to use a a mechanism that is in the middle. We can call it an API. So as long as we have this API, they can communicate in an easy way and understandable way for for machines. For the web services, we have two different approaches. The soap services that are those that use XMLs and are quite more complex because we can call it that it was the first generation. And lately we have the REST services that it's uh, for us more understandable because we are doing a request and expecting a response using a JSON format as you, as you remember in a few slides ago, as Guillermo said, is basically using a crude a crude just to create, retrieve, update, and delete the, the resources and all the information that you need. What is continuous integration? Okay, uh, quickly going on this, you know, as I said uh, before, st starting with the API topic, for a software QA engineer, it's not only about executing the test cases and that's it and logging the results. It's also about, we want to move forward. What about if we want to implement some sort of mechanism so we can prevent when we get uh, some test cases are failing, we are preventing from deploying a new version into the system and concurring errors. Uh, we can have work on, on that later as we move on to the next topic, but no worries, uh, we got you covered. Um, and uh, so adding, uh, adding uh, more information to that uh, answer, uh, Carlos, uh, I want to say that uh, there are different kind of tools, uh, well, CI tools, uh, like Jenkins, Travis, uh, Circuit CI. I, I don't know if you worked with those uh, in the past, but, but uh, there are uh, too many advantages to uh, persist the, the quality of, of the test. It is part of the, of the automation process, okay? When you uh, develop your a test automation framework, you put that framework into a, a CI tool to, to execute those end-to-end -end tests uh, when an action is triggered, okay? So for example, probably you configured your CI tools um, that uh, when a, a new code change is implemented, uh, uh, okay, um, th that uh, it's going to be triggered your test automation framework and it's going to start to execute to validate that uh, nothing uh, is broken after uh, that new code, okay? Um, I don't know if uh, you, you have uh, more questions uh, because it, until this point, uh, we conclude the first section
which is uh, the theory about the, uh, what backend test uh, is. Okay, so I don't know if you work uh, with this uh, in the past, but uh, I'm happy to read your questions if you have, uh, because we we want that this webinar be uh, helpful for you to understand these kind of concepts and start to to work on this kind of tests. Okay, uh, well, uh, for everybody uh, that is in the call, I'm going to read the question. Uh, okay, so what kind of testing do you usually perform when testing, uh, when testing APIs? I will understand the most common uh, Yes, the, the most common ones would be testing data. Are there other kind of tests that are commonly executed to test APIs, security, stress testing? Okay. Um, if you use a JMeter, for example, JMeter is a performance tool, okay? It's a, for performance testing, but if you use a JMeter in the past, you can notice that you also uh, hit the endpoints of an API to to monitor the the responses in in, in how how many memory consume or how many resources are consuming after you hitting a uh, an endpoint. So it's it, 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 these kind of tools also uh, work uh, works with the APIs but um, the focus or, or the goal of that um, kind of tools are only related to to see the response okay in the time the uh, resources they consuming etc but Another tools like Postman uh, uh, with Newman or GraphQL are specifically to test uh, the backend site. Okay, so work similar, but uh, the purpose is different for each one. Okay. Yes, and Guillermo would like to complement that answer, saying that it is important to have a specialized tool for that kind of a specific testing, but also if you want to to got you covered probably when you are creating your your request with postman you want to set up the the times the time response for that specific specific resource what does it mean it means that you are you're requesting some information and checking the response in a in certain window frame so if for any reason you are getting a delay in the response you can assume that something is happening with the with the backend, probably something with the infrastructure or something is not working and it supposedly was working before. So that's another way. Uh, it's not exactly performance testing, but it's a way you want to be covered as, as soon as you are doing a minor consult for a resource. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. Another question here, uh, when you develop an application, do you have to plan in advance to include an API? Is there an architectural pattern, pattern commonly used uh, to develop APIs? Okay, uh, to answer that question, uh, if, if you are in charge to, to create a test strategy document, for example, uh, as we know in a test strategy, you need to specify in the test types that you are going to to implement in the project uh, the tools that are going to be involved the scope or uh, what is out of the scope i don't know uh, the definition of done definition of ready and more more uh, uh, characteristics about this you you need to consider well you need to do a research first to make sure that uh, uh, these kind of tests uh, are going to be possible because sometimes depends on the architecture of the project, okay? Um, you need to make sure first if this is a, some, um, 
uh, something able to to be implemented in your project because sometimes the architecture uh, or the necessity the necessity of the project is different uh, um, for uh, depending of the project also you need to consider a uh, time and resources because if you are if you want to plan execute many kind of tests for example a front end test a back end test um, accessibility test performance test security test and you are a two or three testers only in in the team well that's going to be very difficult so you need to consider those kind of factors before to 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 start to implement a, all the 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 test that you are in mind but if this is a something available i absolutely recommend this kind of test to ensure the quality of the product okay i see another question yes i think we have one from diana before she's saying in api testing what is the coverage of the test required to pass an automation it is sufficient to perform the happy root case test API, or is necessary to include all the tests of the identified places? Is there a rule about this concern? Okay, uh, being specific about this question, uh, it reminds me that there is a, a similar topic for the ISTQB certification. How much testing is needed? And there is not an accurate answer for it. So it's mostly about understanding the the system that you are going to test, in this case, the API and the different resources available. Of course, it's, it's always valid to go through the happy path, but you want to also keep an eye on those negative scenarios. What happens if we are not sending a, a header? What, what happens if I'm checking a, an API, but I'm not sending the ID? I mean, you need to consider other the, the likeliness of other scenarios is to make sure that you are overall covered if something is uh, likely to happen. I'm, I'm not sure if that's uh, understandable for all of you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Carlos. Also, I see another question. Uh, who provides the APIs? Okay. Um, here is where where I mentioned that uh, uh, you need to make a research to see uh, the possibilities that you'd have, because for example, uh, the development team is who, who implement the APIs of a project, okay? But for example, if you are going to use a GraphQL, in GraphQL, you, you can find a, more documentation a, about a, the API a, versus I don't know, rest assured a, a, a process, a, because a, with rest assured, a, the development team is in charge to update the documentation of, of the API. So that, that's a, some aspects that you need to consider a, when you start to implement this kind of tests. Okay. I see another question. Uh, do you use Postman to do stress testing or what can be used? Okay. Uh, for stress testing, uh, there are many kind of tools like uh, JMeter, Load Runner, and more, but mm, not necessary you use Postman uh, to perform that kind of test. Uh, you use Postman to see uh, that the all the endpoints from the an API are working properly and are uh, uh, responding uh, uh, properly uh, for each uh, request. Okay. Um. Do we have more questions? Okay. 
Well, uh, the questions about uh, the ASTQB, uh, we can cover in, in, in an email. You, you can send to us an email about uh, that kind of uh, questions uh, because that's uh, out of the scope uh, of this uh, uh, webinar because uh, ISTQB certifications uh, involves all the, the theory uh, of a tester, uh, the mindset of a, Q, a QA. So if you, if you have uh, more questions about the uh, ISTQB and certifications about that, uh, feel free to send us uh, an email. Uh, we, we will be happy to answer you. Uh, but related to the backend uh, uh, area, uh, there are, are there more questions? No, if not, uh, we can uh, continue with the, the next section, which is a uh, postman, okay? And thank you uh, everyone for, uh, for participating uh, on this because I think that that's the value of this webinar, uh, provide to you the uh, knowledge uh, necessary to, to start uh, uh, with this kind of, of tests, okay? So thank you and keep participating. Okay, so the next section is Postman. As I mentioned before, uh, po uh, like Postman, uh, there are another kind of tools, another kind of technologies that you can implement to execute this uh, backend test. Postman is an excellent option. I'm not uh, saying that is the best, but this is uh, uh, one of a uh, one of the tools that I more like. So I, I comfortable using Postman. It's a, a very powerful uh, tool. And, and it's a, a good way to start with these kind of tests, okay? So first of all, uh, what, is, what is Postman? Okay, Postman is a, is a tool that specializes to, to execute uh, this kind of, of test. Uh, you can use it if you you work with the Windows, uh, Mac OS, uh, Linux. It doesn't matter. Okay, so it, it's uh, to test APIs. Also, you can find a uh, documentation about these APIs, and also you can automate uh, your test, your backend test, uh, uh, with Postman, and we're using Newman also. Uh, but we are going to talk uh, more about that later. And okay, uh, also uh, we can find basic performance support that it's something that I mentioned before. It's not a, a performance tool. Uh, you can see obviously that, that time of the response, which is performance, but it's not specialized uh, for that. And also uh, it's, uh, um, contains a, a GraphQL support, okay? So this is a correct structure uh, in, to organize your test and, and avoid a, a, a only create request in, in with, with a, a, a strange names. Okay, so this is a correct structure. You have to work a workspace and this is working with the collections. You can create a collection and under that collection, you start to, to create folders. Uh, for example, I don't know, uh, one folder is going to be uh, for a test uh, related to a specific section, okay? And the folder number two is going to be uh, uh, related to test uh, uh, an independent section in, in under each folder, you can organize each request. If you need to um, consult or query a, a existing data, or if you want to create new data, update existing data, or delete existing data, you can uh, do it uh, in an organized way. 
uh, under the proper folder. Okay, so here in the documentation, we can we explain um, each component of this tool. But we are going to start uh, to work a, a demo. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we're going to provide uh, to you the, this material, but uh, you can see that we have here a, a quick look uh, about the workspace and collections, uh, how to create re requests, uh, collection options, and, uh, well, uh, the uh, correct structure of a, a request, uh, pa params, parameters uh, that you can use to make then um, in a dynamic way, uh, this kind of request. And also um, if you need to, to specify the authorization to, to log in into the application and, and hit all the endpoints that you need. Also, we are going to see that. The headers, uh, which is, for example, the content type that I mentioned before, uh, the test that you can implement of in, in, in this kind of request and the uh, different type of variables, okay? Uh, local variables, environment variables, global variables, etc. How to set the variables and how to export this collection if you need to, to send this to another team member. Okay, so let's go to, to the, the tool, okay? Mm -mm. You, you can see my, my postman, right? Okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, to perform this, uh, this uh, short demo, we are going to use uh, this uh, application, we, uh, which is called Todoist. Todoist is a, a task management tool. Uh, you can... Uh, uh, create uh, projects, create uh, tasks uh, for these projects, etc. It's just to like a, a kind of a agenda or, or, or yes, a, a task management uh, website. And also, uh, you you can see that we have our our um, API documentation for this uh, web application. Okay. The, the, this is a good application that you can uh, use to start with this kind of test. Okay, so for example, uh, let me go, okay. Let me go to Postman and we're going to, to create a new collection. This collection is going to be, I don't know, um, Academy, Academy demo. Okay, we, we can uh, put a short description Okay. Uh, okay. Um, this collection is created to test different um, endpoints on a to do is API. Just a short description, just to a uh, uh, make sure that everything is a. Uh, uh, properly documented and here is my new collection okay so if you uh, let me delete this request if you uh, see this collection is empty obviously so we are going to start to add in new requests okay so let's say that uh, that we are going to create a new project into to do uh, application okay create a new project and a short description uh, we need to create a, a new project just to make sure that everything is working properly okay now when you create a new request the uh, default method is going to is going to be get method, okay? But do, do you remember which method we need to use to create a new, a new item or a new component?
Okay, pause, exactly. Put is to update the existing data, okay? So in this case, uh, is, uh, we are going to use uh, the pause method, okay? So uh, we are going to change it. As you can see, we have a lot of uh, uh, different kind of methods here, but the most common and always you are going to, to use get, post, put, and delete. Put the patch, uh, it could be for the same pur uh, purpose, which is update the existing data, but we're going to talk about the difference later. Uh, get, post, put, and delete, okay? So I change to post method, and uh, first of all, it's a good practice to execute your test manually first. For example, here, uh, okay. Here manually, I need to click here and in, in uh, I don't know. I'm probably uh, I want to put a um, I don't know my my first project. Okay, my first project. Okay, in the rest of the the options uh, like this. Okay, so I click into it, and as you can see. Uh, sorry. Okay. 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 Now it, it was a, a delay, but the, as you can see, the, it was created successfully. My first project. Okay. So we are going to replicate this test uh, um, from, from in the backend side. Okay. So how I, I can make sure that uh, that about the proper endpoint okay as i'm as i mentioned before uh, here we have a documentation uh, from this this um, this web application it's important uh, for every every um, application a uh, uh, um, complete a documentation where you can uh, consult um, all that you need, okay? Excuse me about that. Uh, I need to to connect my computer because I have a low battery. Uh, here, just a second. Okay, let's continue. Sorry about that. Okay, so here is a, the API documentation. And as you can see here, here we have our endpoint to create a new new projects. So as you can see, uh, we are using, well, the application are, is using a protocol which is HTTPS, okay? This is the protocol or the way to communicate uh, uh, with the server, okay? So I'm going to copy this endpoint and I'm going to uh, put it here, okay? Now, uh, what else? What I need? Okay, I, obviously, uh, I need to to I need to to uh, to get my authorization for this this page. Okay, so for this, we are going to we need to 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 get the token. Uh, which is going to be uh, uh, what we are going to use for for um, for uh, for um, login successfully and hit to the endpoint to that endpoint. Okay, so here you can see. Uh, uh, it's easier in Firefox. Let me show you the, the way to extract the, the token from a, the dev tool. Here in Firefox, just I need to go here. Let me log in. Uh, 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 uh. 
Wait a second, please. I need to put my credentials. Sorry about that. So I stopped sharing this, but after logging successfully, I'm going to start to share my screen again. And just wait a second. Okay. Now I'm logged. Let me start to share again. Okay, perfect. You can see my, my screen again, okay? In my to do list uh, web application. Okay, perfect. Here in Firefox, um, if you want uh, to know uh, which is the, the, the token, you only need to go to, to storage section. And the name. Let me wait a second. Just wait a second. It's taking too much time. Let me go ahead again. Oh, uh, something that you need to to uh, be aware about this uh, uh, about the website is that constantly uh, modifications are applied into this uh, website. So, if you are working on this, and probably uh, something change to the next day is normal. Okay, so no worries about that. Um, but. Okay, no, no worries. Um, it's a little bit slow. No, it's okay. It's okay. No worries. Let me again. Okay, no worries. Um, so it happens, okay? So the important thing is that uh, the way to, to extract uh, the token. So as I mentioned before, uh, obviously I, I, I had a, a performance issue here, but when you extract uh, uh, your token, your token, uh, um, here we can see, oh, uh, actually. Your token. No, um, okay. When you, you can extract, uh, when you extract your, your, um, your token, let me show you a quick example. You're talking, it looks like something uh, with the, this structure, okay? So no worries about, about that. Uh, you need to consider that uh, that token uh, is going to be the, the way that you are going to, to ask for authorization into the application, okay? Let me see. So, yeah. Um, okay, now 
If not, uh, we can go a uh, we can go until a uh, another project that I have here just to don't waste time uh, about this webinar. Loading. Hmm. Uh, let me new, open a new new window here. Okay. Sorry about that. The issues, guys. Um, let me see what you are shading. Mm, uh, it's different because you need the, the token. Uh, oh, no. let, let me, let me show. No, it's okay. I, I had a, a, another project to avoid these, these kind of issues. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, it, it happens. But uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the, the, the token is similar like this structure. Okay. So after you extract the, the token, uh, you have a different ways to use it. For example, creating a new environment which is this case, this is my environment, uh, it's, it's one way. If you, if you want to, to start uh, with this, you can use the following thing. For example, here's another uh, request. Uh, uh, in authorization, uh, you have the option to uh, keep this empty and use uh, an environment, as I mentioned, or here you can uh, you, you you can see different kind of authorization. So you can use builder token and put the value. Okay. So after put the value, uh, just I want to to log in with with um, into into that uh, session to show you what happens, okay? Logging again, continue. Oh, sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Log out. Let me stop sharing because I'm going to, to, to put also a, another credential, okay? In the meantime, if you have more questions about the, the previous topics, you can please make your questions. Just I'm going to log in with my old credentials to show you with an example that I already have, okay? So, do you have questions uh, about the previews or about the DC kind of topics say about Postman, for example? What you heard in the past? Just one minute. Yes, absolutely. No worries, Emma. And yes, here we had a, a question from Yana asking about where do you place the token? And I was explaining to her through the chat that, are, that there are two ways that we commonly use for creating this bearer token. One is when we are doing this request, as, as soon as we are creating it, 
we go to the authorization tab and there as Guillermo showing in his screen you can select the authorization mechanism select wherever token and place there the information of course any every single time you will that you log in into the website you will have to commonly update this information to get the wherever token updated the other way is to create an environment and and place there the wherever token as a variable so that way you can only call you are actually encrypting the data, calling to the environment, and the environment is taking care of getting the, the latest server token. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Um, well, uh, well, well, if you uh, have more questions, uh, we can continue. But if not, uh, now uh, you can see my this project in a we keep continue with this, okay? Okay, uh, and also thank you to the people the, who helped me uh, with this issue. Okay, so as I mentioned before, uh, this is another session, okay? So I'm going to recreate the same taste. Uh, this is a new project, okay? Manually, as uh, you see, as you saw in the past, okay? Now the project is, is created successfully. Okay, now in Postman, you see that, that way, okay? So uh, my, my bidder token is specified here in the authorization tab, which headers I need to use. In this case, I, I, I uh, can uncheck this. You can imagine that this, this row doesn't exist because I'm using this token here. In headers, I only need to specify the content type, which is the application JSON. As I mentioned in, in the previous slides, I, I'm waiting uh, for an application JSON, okay? So as I'm creating a new project, I need to specify the, at least the name of, the, of this new project. In this kind, for example, this is going to be a Academy Demo. And I can specify different kind of test. Uh, it's simple uh, as if you Google uh, about this kind of test, and you can see a, a, a different kind of test uh, that you can implement in the response, for, exa for example. You can uh, test for the, the response time, which is a, a kind of performance testing. You can uh, uh, test for the status code. Uh, you can test uh, uh, if, the, the, if the JSON is received uh, properly. And there are too, uh, too many tests that you can implement. In, in this case, I am uh, defining here uh, this kind of test. First of all, uh, that the status code is 200. Per, uh, 200. And uh, the next uh, basic test that I implemented here is that uh, a valid content is received. Okay, so my response, it must contain a body. Also, I, I am validating the schema, the, which is a, a, the schema of the response, okay? This is helpful because sometimes, and you need to think about this, sometimes when you uh, receive a response, the response, it could be uh, uh, sent it successfully, but uh, uh, the response, it could be wrong. So you need to also validate if the schema is, is the proper one. And uh, here, here is something that I am uh, implementing to 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 store the the ID of that project into a variable to use it in another request. For example, I'm not going if I'm going to execute this a, a lot of a, times. A, a lot of projects are going to be created, so I don't want that. A, so I can automate this in a way that a, when a project is created. Um, after that request, a new request, which is a deleted method, is going to be executed. So I can create it 
to test the endpoint and then I can uh, do a rollback, okay? So in this case, uh, before to send the request, uh, uh, we can see that a parameter tab is empty. In authorization, I only have the bidder token. In headers, I only specify the content type and in body, I just uh, telling that, uh, hey, uh, create a new project which, uh, with this name. And I don't have anything in the other tabs, only here in tests that uh, I mentioned before are my tests, okay? So if I send this, I, we can see here that uh, below, below the, the, the request was uh, created su successfully. Check this. Why in test results, uh, I have a one test fail, okay? Because my, my response, uh, that my response time, it was a, of 546 milliseconds. And uh, I, in my test, I'm telling that uh, I'm expected uh, that the, the time response be less than 500 milliseconds, okay? So for example, if I, if I click on send again, now as you can see, uh, the time response was a uh, consume less, le less time, okay? So now all my tests passed and if we go into the application, we can see be, uh, that uh, the project was created. It was created twice because uh, I click on send request uh, twice, okay? So that's the, 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 the first request in to start to, to play with parameters, uh, to start to play with parameters, uh, we can uh, remove this, okay? Let's say that, that, I'm, that I don't have a, that, that token be stored here. And it's going to be here in my environment, okay? It's defined here. So, uh, remember that in headers, we need to uh, check uh, this, this key, which is the authorization key. And it's going to specify here in value, bidder token, okay? It is specified here, and this is the way that you uh, specify variables. So token is the name that I decide to, to uh, name this variable, okay? So if, for example, if I want token academy and I click on update, obviously here I need to change, change it uh, with, the same, with the same name, okay? So I'm, uh, now I'm going to send this, uh, this request again, new project, for example, I'm going to send the request and it sent it successfully. And as you can see here, it, it, here is the new project is created. So I'm hitting that endpoint and I, know, I don't need a user interface to test this, okay? So now I'm sure that the, the API is working properly at least to create new projects, okay? So now, uh, let's say that, that I want to, to list all the projects. Uh, well, uh, I don't need to ask uh, what method we need to use because you can see it here in the, in the screen. But uh, as I mentioned before, get is to retrieve all the existing data. Okay, so and this is uh, very easy to implement because we only need the method, the endpoint, and the, author the authorization. Oh, remember that I changed it. Academy. And I don't need body because I'm not sending any new data. I'm a, I'm a retrieving data. And that's it. In test, a, I, I can use the same test because I'm, vali I'm validating the, the, the response. So if I send that request, uh, we can see that here uh, are listed all the projects that I have uh, created. 
Inbox, it was a default project that is, a, what a, that is a, in the tool. But this is a new project, Academy Demo, Academy Demo, and new project are projects that, that exist in here, okay? So, um, you are list, uh, listing all the projects that, that, you, that you need. Also, the other, uh, let's say that you, you only want to, to get only one project, okay? So in this case, uh, I'm using a, a, this variable to store a, a, the project that was created, okay? So in same case, I'm using here a variables to use a, the, the builder token, Academy, and same test, okay? And if I click on test, as you can see, the last, project that I created is the, the project that I am um, retrieving. Be, be, because here in create new project a, a request, I, I, I'm a defining here that when you execute this a request, store the ID into that this variable, project ID. So now in get a project, uh, I, I'm telling here in the endpoint. Uh, after the the endpoint, uh, retrieve the ID with this value. Okay, so now uh, this is other way to to get only one project. Okay, so now for example, in delete project is something similar because as I mentioned before, what happens if I want to create a new project in then I need to, to do a rollback because I don't want to store a lot of uh, projects uh, or, or a lot of spam there in my code, okay, in my application, okay? So it's the same case. I'm using the, the last ID about the, the, the create project post method and I'm telling here, use a delete method with, to this endpoint with this variable and, and delete it, okay? So in headers, I only have my authorization, academy. In my body, I need to specify the name of the, the project that I want to delete. In this case, let's say that I want to delete new project, okay? So, if I specify here, new project, yes, new project, and I click on send, as you can see, I'm not receiving any body because I'm just deleting the, 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 the project. I'm not creating anything. So if we go here, we, we are in, we notice, we can notice that that project is, is not here anymore, okay? So that, that uh, was a, a that was a successful, executed successful. And in the last one here, uh, to update, why I'm using a post method here? Okay, I'm using a post method here because uh, you also, actually you can also use it because you are a, a sending a, a request to, to modify a, the database. And what I, I, I'm doing here, I'm overwriting, overwritten uh, uh, an existing data, okay? So in this case, it, it is the same, it's the same. For example, if I uh, create a new, a new one, let's say just, uh, I don't know, a P, uh, yes, only P, and I click on send, it was a created successfully here, okay, P. And let's say, oh, it, it was a, a mistake uh, from my side, okay. So let's go until headers and let's go here and hit. Just, uh, da, 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 da. 
Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, uh, I'm telling uh, in this request that uh, uh, use the last ID to update this. Okay, so the new name that I went to this is a, a successful, for example. Successful. Okay, so here I have the P project. Uh, if I click on send request, as you can see, ah, can you, uh, can every, uh, everyone tell me why is failing this? What I need to change to make this a, a successful? It's a, something that I had to do in the previous request. Exactly, the name of the token. It actually, is the name. Then it's not expired because I changed the name to Token Academy. Okay. So now Token Academy is specified, and if I click again, as you can see, I I'm not receiving a body, but the name was a, a updated successfully. Because I'm overreaching uh, the the past the previous project with a new one, okay. Now, just let me make sure that uh, all my tokens are properly. One second, okay. Good, good, and good. And this one also, okay. Now, if you want to execute all your requests, because it's necessary, because if you have a bunch of requests, you are not uh, spend time uh, one by one. So if you want to uh, execute all in, in the same, at the same time, you can do the following thing. You can click here in open new. Uh, uh, Sorry, sorry, in runner, in runner. You can click here in runner and you 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 are uh, you have a list of the collections uh, that, that you have in your uh, workspace here. In this case, I'm going to use a uh, to do list and we are uh, see, seeing this folder uh, related to the project request. Okay, so after click on run to do list, uh, I mean, run this collection. They, there is something else that I need to change. Do you know what is? Okay. Uh, remember that in this case, I'm using an environment to execute all the re these requests. So here in environment, I need to specify the proper environment. Remember that the environment is here in the top. So it, this is something that you need to be aware of because sometimes uh, we forgot to change the environment and, and we, we can notice that all the requests start to fail and it, it, it's uh, because the, the environment, okay? So now I, I select my collection and my environment. And if I click on, click on run to this, as you can see, I, I, I execute all my requests. The, this failed because the time, remember? So if I, if I run, in, run again, probably it's going to pass. Okay, as you can see, 16 requests uh, passed and just uh, and anyone failed. Okay, so this is a way to execute all your requests uh, at the same time, only with uh, one button. Okay. So uh, let's continue with Newman, which is going to be a, a good approach to, auto, uh, to automate this kind of test. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Guillermo. And if you don't mind, I'd like to share my screen since that will be better for them to see how the application is actually running. Just one second, please guys, let me know as soon as you can see my screen, just where we are missing a, a topic.
Okay, we can continue. So before moving to what is Newman, we actually want to discuss what is a JSON schema. As you can read here, it says JSON schema is a specification for JSON-based format for defining the structure of JSON data. So what it means really. In other words, for me is one way to represent JSON data based on JSON format. And I'm going through an example. Let me present. In this example, I hope you really can see my screen here at this point. The image is not exactly as the quality we needed, but as you can see here, we have all the different information about the, the JSON data that we are sending in, in the body. We have the schema, the title, the type, the items, uh, again, the different properties for, for what we are embedding into the, the JSON. But imagine that this is, this is the, the information that we're gonna send in a request. For me, I would like to do this to show you in real time what is actually the JSON schema. Imagine this is the information that you need to send in a request. If you go to this link and you can check many others on, online, there is one way to convert the JSON into a JSON schema. I'm just gonna place the information that I had here. And as you can see, it provided me with the infer JSON schema. Here, what we are doing is basically validating not only the information that we send, but also the information that we receive, that it comes in the structure that we needed just to make sure that all the information is, is integer. And keep an eye on the email, for example. Here, as you can see, we are creating a user and asking for three different fields, the ID, the email, and the name. But for, the, for all of them, they are a string type but the email type, we can actually get more information if we check here again in the slides that we are gonna share with you later on. And the learning resources, understanding the JSON schema. Here we can see that there are other types and keywords that we can use for the JSON just to make sure that we are actually doing some validations in the format that we are interacting with. Okay, perfect. And finally going with Newman. Newman, oh, once you have created your collection that you have all of your requests into a collection and they are ready on Postman, probably you are wondering, I would like to move forward and I would like to implement this uh, collection to be run into a continuous integration, continuous uh, deployment uh, tool. So how can I do it? How can I run what I just saw in the graphic user interface of Postman to be run into a command line? For that, we can use Newman. Newman, as you can see, uh, Newman is an open source tool and we can just get it installed just by running this simple command, npm install minus d Newman. Um, let me show you here in my local. Well, well, first of all, like I said, I already got it installed, but one way to run my collection, and I am gonna show you a, a few simple examples here. I'm gonna run my collection, and it's gonna show me how many of these requests fail, how many of these requests uh, were su successful. And everything goes from the common line. Again, let me try again. But this time, adding this uh, this parameter, the hyphen e login Postman environment JSON, which as uh, Guillermo was explaining, here we have the collection, and that's something that we are exporting as a JSON file. But also by adding the authorization bearer token into a environment, we can also export that. And coming here again. is running not only my collection, but also running the collection into the environment that I specify. And here, for example, we can see there, there is only one assertion that failed. And that assertion, yes, is because the response time is less than 500 milliseconds, but this is mostly because of my poor internet connection, guys. 
And finally, okay, as you can see, this is the, the report, but what about if you wanna show those results into a more, uh, we can call it beautiful way to present with other stakeholders? What if you want to share this information with your development team? For that, we can use the HTML reports. This actually comes as a new plugin for Newman, and the only thing that you need to do once that you have installed Newman is, is run this command again, minus the Newman slash uh, hyphen reporter hyphen HTML, and run with this, with, this, uh, with this parameter at the end. Let me show you. Okay, here I'm specifying again the collection that I want to run and the environment, and I only need to include the hyphen hyphen reporters equals HTML. As you can see, this time it didn't generate me anything in the in the terminal. So I need to navigate to the folder where I ha actually have the collection and the environment exported. In this case, it's this folder. And it create a new folder that it's called Newman. If I go again, actually I have two files. One is the one that I generated a uh, uh, before this session, and this one is uh, the latest, the newest. When I double click on it, I can see in a more presentable way all the results that I got, the iteration, the request, the, the assertion that failed, the, the assertion that succeeded, and all the inform and this information is more meaningful for stakeholders to share with. Yeah, even you can, th there are another components like this one that it's called HTML extra that comes with a more user-friendly interface. And that basically covers everything that we got about Newman. I'm gonna stop sharing and Guillermo, I'm gonna ask you to oh, share again, or uh, I'm not sure if there is a final comment that you would like to, to set up at Newman. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Uh, well, actually, uh, as you mentioned, uh, that that uh, that cover uh, all the that we have uh, about Newman. Mm -hmm. um, it, it basically, uh, the, 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 uh, what you uh, saw uh, mm -hmm. in the runner runner uh, process that I use it uh, to execute all my tests uh, at the same time is basically uh, what uh, Carlos uh, show, showed to us here uh, with Newman, just using uh, commands. Why use, uh, just I want to, to, um, to highlight the, this, the, this uh, because if I can run all my tests uh, using uh, the um, Postman's runner, when, uh, why I need to implement Newman? Okay, it's important to implement Newman if you pretend to, to use your test automation framework, uh, test automation framework in a CI uh, pipeline, because the, in a, using a CI tool, isn't a, the, the CA tool is not going to to use any interface, only commands. So it's because of that that Newman is the perf <clears throat> the perfect option to automate uh, this kind of test because we are executing this test uh, through the uh, uh, command. Okay, so it's because of that that Newman is important to use uh, CA tools like Jenkins, uh, Travis, and as I mentioned before. Okay, uh, well, uh, actually, uh, that's that's uh, everything that we have, uh, at least that I'm uh, forgetting something, but uh, if not, uh, maybe we can uh, use these uh, 14 minutes that we still have to answer questions that probably you have. Okay. 
So you have questions? I hope that they to to uh, well sorry about the, the technical issues issues that I had uh, before. It happens, but uh, I hope that uh, the the rest of the the request that I could uh, execute successfully was very useful for you to understand uh, better uh, why this is important. Okay. Um, well, uh, that uh, I had a, a technical issues, but for example, uh, in Firefox, if you want to to get the token from your session, uh, you only need to open your web tool, um, refresh your page, and th there is a tab uh, which is called uh, storage. In storage, you can see <clears throat> a cookies section, and in that section, you, you can uh, get the token that you are using. It's because of that that, that that I couldn't use another one because the token is unique. The token is like a, a, your your credentials in, in a piece of code that tell the application that you are going to access uh, into the, the, uh, the code um, to hit the endpoint that you, you need. So in Firefox, I know that uh, you, you can get it from the storage tab on their cookie section, uh, but in Chrome, not sure. I think that it's a uh, pretty similar, but not sure. Uh, Okay, uh, for example, if you are developing, uh, creating an application, uh, I understand that depends of the, the technology that you are going to use because if you are implementing ExpressJS, uh, when you develop the API it, uh, in that piece of code, you define the error message or the success message that you want to to show into in, into the console. Okay, um, in Postman there is a tab called pre request script. What is this for? And you have an example for it. Uh, in in this uh, project, uh, I don't have uh, the example, but basically a pre request is a something that you need to to execute before to execute your your main request let's say uh, let, let's put uh, this uh, example uh, using i don't know a front end test case okay if you want to to execute a, a test case uh, as we know as, as testers uh, we know that uh, we have a, a um, uh, before class and an after class or in the before class or before each class depending uh, how you are implementing that uh, you are executing so, uh, some uh, code lines before your test it's like prepare what you need to execute your test uh, for example uh, i don't know in, in a front end uh, uh, test case you need to execute the login or probably if you need to work with a specified uh, row, uh, you can execute uh, as a precondition uh, the creation of that row that you are going to, to work later. So in Postman is something similar. If you need, I don't know, to update something, probably uh, you can use a pre-request to create that, uh, that item or that component that you are going to modify later. It's a different way to work, okay? Mm. Ah, okay, I, re I, I remember using Postman once and there was a Chrome extension that would get all the cookies, all uh, session information. I'm not sure if that would be helpful to get the token. Uh, no, uh, I had a, some technical issues, uh, but no worries about that. Uh, if you uh, um, work in an application and you open your dev tool, easily you can get uh, the token. Just 
it was a thing that I, I confused a little bit, but it's easy. It's really easy. Trust me, you don't need the, the plugin. But if you have the question about what is better, the, the Postman application or the Postman plugin, I recommend 100% you use the Postman application because the plugin is very limited. Uh, it, it, it not a uh, too much uh, I don't know resources that you can use uh, like like a Postman application. Um, you can also try searching for the iteration. You can see the step to the token. Yes, yes. Uh, as I mentioned, the the token is easy to to extract. Just <laughs> I I was a uh, uh, a mistake, but uh, I didn't to I I, I I didn't want to to consume too much time. So it because of that that I jump into uh, an existing project that I I created before. Sorry again about that. <laughs> um, da, da, da. Uh, if I skip a question, please let me know. Okay, so it depends on the technology, but it's recommend to put to put it on the API body specifying the message. Uh, I'm not sure if you are talking about uh, when a uh, um, API is uh, in process in, to be created. You mean about uh, put the message that you want to display in, in the API code? Yes, actually we need more context about that question because there are some cases where it is only enough to evaluate the status code that you are getting into your response and that's it. And there are other scenarios that you want to provide more information into an error message just to let the user or someone from the development team know uh, what is going on between this API communication, probably even when they are interacting with a third party. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Um, also, I see this question. Can I start to work, a uh, create, read, update, delete? with Postman without the developer help. Some time ago, a tester friend told me that I need to ask some data to the developers. Okay, uh, in this case, as I mentioned before, uh, that the uh, API's documentation uh, is it's updated by the development team. So if you have a, all that, technical skills to, to analyze the code. I think that, okay, you can work without help, but always, 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 it's very helpful if you ask for help to the development team, because honestly, we know that we are a team, we are working with teams, so it's part of the, of the culture that we need to, to, to have, ask for help, and help others. So yes, I recommend to to ask help for the development team. It's gonna be easier. Okay. Um, what's the script that automatically run in human? Is this tool being integrated with another tool to validate the results and proceed with the continuous integration? Okay, depends. It depends because a it, it depends on what you need. For example, if you uh, automate uh, your backend test in, if your only rule, uh, rule is that uh, after the, the test pass successfully, uh, go ahead and, and deploy the code, uh, that, that's gonna be in the rule. You don't need to, to uh, validate more. It's enough uh, that if your test uh, pass successfully, but uh, be careful with that. Your test going, uh, must cover uh, all the, the criteria that you need to consider that uh, passed. Okay. Um, 
And I, I see the, the latest question is, uh, where is it recommended to store or publish your request test results so they are accessible to your team and stakeholders? I would say that this is something that you need to check, uh, first of all, with your team, also with the IT department from your company, because most of the times, as you want to share this information as soon as, as it is available, probably there are another ways or another mechanism that you can use. I mean, uh, sending those results by email or publish them through a Slack channel, but only a few people can get access to those uh, mechanisms so they can go and check quickly and what was the, the result of the, of the latest execution. Uh, but again, it's most about uh, check what are the do's and don'ts from your IT company about that specific question because some of them, they have those uh, limitations. Finally, guys, uh, we would like to ask you the five, the final five minutes just to go to this link. You can use your, your cell phone, scan the QR code, and provide us your feedback about this, uh, this overall webinar. All the information that we get from you will be meaningful in future iterations that we can go come back with uh, different topics or even iterate this, this very specific one about Postman. Yes, uh, please, uh, people. Um, it's going to take just two minutes, so if you can go, uh, as Carlos mentioned, uh, throw this uh, URL and, and provide uh, your feedback. It's going to be very helpful for us to improve uh, these webinars and bring a more uh, webinars with the best uh, quality possible. And again, uh, sorry about the technical issues uh, that I had, uh, but uh, I hope that uh, uh, the webinar was uh, helpful for you. And if you have questions, please uh, you can uh, send us a, an email and we can uh, answer you. Okay, so um, if you already answer uh, the feedback, uh, that it will, it will, it's not mandatory, but it really, really is gonna be very helpful for us. If you can, uh, you can go, but uh, we really appreciate. It. Okay, finally, we would like to say again, thank you so much guys for being here, for attending this two hours webinar, despite the errors and, and the problems that we have with the internet connections, with the validation, but it was only to see that it was a real life demo and there, that, that was something that was ongoing. Thank you so much guys again for, uh, for taking these two hours from your time for this preparation. We would like to discuss further into further questions, but uh, again, please uh, be in touch. Yes, uh, we really appreciate your time. Thank you everybody uh, for, for your time. And I hope that you can start to implement this kind of test. And uh, we will see you in, in another webinar. Okay, so thank you again, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, we hope you had a great time and find the content very useful. And as I told you before, stay tuned for more courses, programs, resources in general. Uh, we hope to see you again.